What's going on guys, Yonder Gogeta here. Just want to say Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. I hope it was a great time for you. I apologize for the lack of content though. I've been sick and trying to get my life together with a job and everything and it's been a whole thing. But I've got things planned so please be patient with me. The support on the channel has been amazing so thank you guys so much. With that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks again. The Persona 4 Arena Trophy List is one of the hardest fighting game platinums for a couple of key reasons. This isn't to be confused with Persona 4 Arena Ultimax which was released shortly after and recently ported to modern consoles. Persona 4 Arena was the original that continued the Persona 4 Golden storyline and gave the cast a lot more depth to their character, but that's for another video. This video is to explain why the Platinum Trophy is, in my opinion, one of the hardest fighting game platinums of all time. I hope you enjoy the video. Most of the trophies in this game are actually pretty straightforward and can be done really quickly. This is stuff like beating every path of the story, getting a perfect victory, and a bunch of other miscellaneous things. Where the problems arise are with the combo challenges. Combos are probably the most recognized thing to a casual viewer of fighting games, and a lot of them can look super complex which can turn a lot of people off from the genre. Persona combos aren't too difficult when comparing it to a lot of other fighting games, but the trophy called Combo Crazy asks you to do every combo challenge in the game for every character in the game. And you may be asking, just how many combo challenges are there in Persona 4 Arena? There are a total of 390 in the game. Each character has 30 challenges and there are 13 characters. I actually play Persona 4 Arena Ultimax competitively, and while that's a different version of the game, the combos are more or less pretty similar, if not identical to each other in some cases. I still had some issues when trying to do these combos. Characters like Mitsuru who use charge inputs, where you have to hold back in the middle of pressing inputs, or Yukiko where you have to use negative edge inputs that require you to hold buttons in the middle of doing a combo can be extremely tricky. Despite how difficult these challenges can be at times, I literally almost broke my controller during Yukiko's Challenge 29. I think they are a really great addition to fighting games that every game should have. Even if they aren't optimal or match practical combos so to speak, they teach the player some basic combo structure of the character and can give a head start on trying to learn a character without needing to rely on outside resources like YouTube videos. This is one of those trophies where you're either going to grind out the challenges, learn to do them, and get them done or give up. There's no real way to cheese this out. It's a strictly skill based thing, but this is not even the close to the hardest thing in the game. That title goes with the score attack trophy. What makes that trophy so hard? Well, let's see. So just for some context, score attack is a mode present in a lot of anime fighting games where you go through a gauntlet of characters whether it be random or set order and make your way through trying to accumulate the most points as possible to set a high score. Most games have the AI on a pretty easy difficulty setting where you can go wild and do whatever you want. But Persona 4 Arena for whatever reason was the exception to this, and Arc System Works decided to make the mode nearly impossible for any casual player. To complete score tag mode you have to beat every character in a row without losing a match, the order of characters being set each time you enter the mode. Now what exactly makes the mode so hard? Well first off the AI are set to the hardest difficulty in the game by default, so that you're going to disrespect everything you do and constantly try to hit you no matter what. But that's not even the bad part. The part that makes it so unfair is every character is on boss mode. What does boss mode do exactly you may ask? Well good question. Boss mode gives every character massive buffs like way more health, damage, and other things that are unique to each character that we'll get to as we get to each character individually. So in a nutshell the AI can kill you in one hit while you have to hit them about 10 times at the minimum. Awesome! Before we get into each character I must explain the tactic I'm doing in the footage shown. This tactic is called the pause tactic. Beating score attack is extremely hard as I said, and this tactic is damn near the only way I could feasibly do it. What it boils down to is mashing the pause button to see what the AI is going to do and then reacting accordingly. If you do not use this method I'm half tempted to say it is impossible for the vast majority of players to ever even humor giving this mode a try, so when you see me mashing the pause button, that is why. The first opponent you fight in score attack is Yosuke Hanamura. Boss mode Yosuke is one of the easier characters in this mode, and he's still really, really annoying. Yosuke is always in a Tsukukaja state, so he's essentially teleporting across the entire screen at all times. The only saving grace is that he's a very predictable character and has a lower damage output than the other boss mode characters. In my opinion, Naoto is by far the easiest character to beat in score attack mode. 
but also mode Naoto isn't doing anything too crazy or game breaking, so you're just finding a Naoto AI that does way more damage. The most annoying thing she will do is spam her gun from full screen and shoot you, but it's fairly easy to navigate around thankfully. Now Yukiko is when shit starts getting real. Despite her sucking and being the worst character in the game in Arena, her boss mode iteration is so unfair and infuriating to the point where with some characters, there's damn near nothing you can do in certain situations she puts you in. What makes boss mode Yukiko so unfair is that she always has level 8 fire level and fire break. Her fire levels make her fire based damage do way more damage, and fire break makes her attacks unblockable, so you can see why this is a bullshit combination. I had so many times where I would win the entire round, and then I would get hit by a reversal super that's unblockable and then instantly die. If the character you're playing cannot avoid these attacks, then you better hope you can kill her before she kills you. Teddy is fairly easy as well because the AI has no idea how to actually use his items or anything to make him threaten. But as soon as he gets to Awakening is when it gets obnoxious. Teddy in Awakening gets access to a super called Teddy Circus where he gets on top of a circus ball that flies across the screen. And the ball is unblockable so you have to jump over it. Normally this is really slow and doesn't do that much damage, but Boss Teddy races across the screen and does that three times. It can hit you up to three times, but even if it hits you once, you're taking like 70% of your health and it's just ridiculous. And he can do this multiple times in a single round if he has meter. Other than that, he's easy, you just better time those jumps or you're toast. Kanji isn't that hard to beat, but the way you have to fight his boss mode AI version is so annoying and stressful. The Kanji AI is so random and will spam his command grabs if you get even a fraction of a centimeter in the range of them and the grabs do half your health minimum. He'll also do his dive move in the air which the community dubs Shitlord. Yes, that's actually what it's called. And if it hits you, it'll do big damage as well. Thankfully, you can just crouch and it'll miss which gives you a free combo. Kanji is still really slow and easy to play around, but like I said, it's just more stressful than anything. Chie is similar to Kanji except she's scarier in nearly every way. She doesn't have a command grab or anything, but if she touches you once, you are probably dead. Her power charge meter is always at max, and power charge makes all of her special moves do exorbitant amounts of damage. Her god hand super in particular does 9000 damage raw, which almost kills every character, and she spams that non-stop as soon as she has the meter for it. So if you make a single mistake, you're losing the round pretty much. She also has Agni Astra, or as I like to call it, Meatball Super, that will also kill you instantly if you get hit pretty much. She can also kill you off her DP, so that's very, very fun and fair. Mitsuru is one of the most annoying characters to fight on score attack and that's because every single one of her attacks frees you in ice. And to get out of ice you have to mash forward and back over and over and over again and pray you get out of time. Most times though she's going to instantly kill you before you even have a chance to get out since every time she hits you it resets the ice onto you. She's also just really annoying to fight because her moves have so much range. Fighting boss Mitsuru boils down to hitting her and never getting hit ever. Akihiko is sort of simple to beat, but he's really stressful as well because he always has his Thunder Fist buff which leaves you shocked when he hits you, and shock makes it to where you cannot move without normal system mechanics like roll and hop. He also has a high cyclone level which makes his supers do more damage and generally makes him a bit scarier in pressure. If you don't know how to fight him then you're going to be stuck blocking forever while he chips away at your health slowly or just kills you in one combo when there's nothing you can do about it. I guess it's extremely tough or extremely easy depending on what character you are playing. Some characters who have a decent long range attacks, it's not bad at all. But if you're playing a character that relies on being in the opponent's face, then it could potentially be one of the hardest ones. The reason for this is because the I guess AI is programmed to sit full screen away from you and spam missiles and bullets at you. This is made even worse when you realize that boss mode I guess has 999 bullets as opposed to the standard 120 she normally has. Fighting Aegis is mostly a test of patience. Narukami is by far the most annoying and in my opinion, unfair character in score attack mode. What makes it infuriating to fight Narukami is that he can cancel any of his specials into other specials, so he can just spam Raging Lion and Zeocar over and over and over again and you are forced to block until you can find a way to punish him or until one of his moves misses. Also, there's a great chance that if you get hit a single time you are going to die. This is the case for almost every score attack enemy, but the affirmation's points makes this infinitely worse. Shadow Labyrinth is really easy to exploit as she is programmed to 9 times out of 10 press all out attack on wake up when you get near her, so you can just spam throws to kill her pretty easily and consistently. 
If you don't do that, it can be extremely annoying to fight her though because of Asterius, her bull persona. It's super annoying and she'll continuously spam her bite attack as well as a bunch of other cheap garbage that'll kill you in like one hit. She also likes to spam a super called Brutal Impact, and if you don't avoid that super you die in one shot, and it also has armor. So finding Shadow Labras comes down to getting lucky and just killing her before she has a chance to do anything. Labras is pretty similar to Shadow Labras with how her AI works, but she's a bit more aggressive and less predictable. She'll still do all out attack on wake up sometimes, but nowhere near as often. She'll usually opt for a 5A which can be a problem because if that 5A hits you, there's a good chance you're dead. This isn't just because the boss mode AI does more damage, but also because boss mode Labras always has Red Axe. Red Axe makes Labras' moves incorporating her axe significantly more powerful, gives her more block stun on her attacks, and makes her supers do way more damage. Labras makes you play extremely carefully. In appropriate fashion, Elizabeth is the final character you fight in score attack, and she definitely earns the honors as she is secret optional boss level of strength. The thing is, Liz on her own actually isn't all that scary, but boss Liz alongside the way her AI is programmed makes her pretty damn terrifying. There's a few things that make this the case, and that's the fact that she has like 50,000 health, her insta-kill moves activate almost instantly, and she can heal to full health with a super at any time if you aren't able to hit her in time, and that's the main problem. You gotta keep mauling on her for the entire round and avoid everything happening on screen, and if you play improperly for a second, it's over. Truly worthy of a final boss. Now doing this with one character is hard enough. You get a single bronze trophy for beating it with a single character. For the platinum, you have to do this with every character in the game. You have to beat this bullshit mode 13 times in total. This is by far one of the hardest trophies for fighting games, definitely the hardest Persona trophy of all time, and probably one of the hardest trophies on PS3 ever. If you for whatever reason are interested in going for the Persona 4 Arena Platinum, then I have a few tips for you. Firstly, go check out the trophy guide I co-wrote alongside my friend Lucky Slime on PSN Profiles. This will give you all of the information you need for the miscellaneous trophies as well as the combo challenges and score attack. Some extra tips I can give for score attack is that a lot of characters are extremely predictable and can be beaten in the same way almost every single time. Obviously the AI won't do the exact same things every single attempt, but they'll be pretty close. An example is that the AI once in Awakening are programmed to spam reversal supers. This is because if they hit you they'll probably kill you in one shot. So as soon as they hit Awakening Health Ring, immediately play more passively and wait for the AI to do something stupid. Another small tip I can give is to figure out what you can and can't safely roll out of. Narukami for example becomes extremely easier to fight if you know when you can roll out of certain scenarios. The final tip I can give, and this is optional, is to go to training mode with each character to get a feel of how they work and maybe learn a simple combo. The more knowledge you have, the way easier it'll be. So that's about all I have to say about the Persona 4 Arena Platinum. This Platinum is ridiculously hard and I give a massive shout out to anyone who has actually managed to get this Platinum because I almost tore my hair out trying to get this done. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And that's about it. I'll see you all next time. Stay safe and healthy as always. Love you guys. Take it easy. Happy New Year.